Hey guys, it's Glassbox here and welcome to my Git video tutorial series. In the previous video, we covered how to create a fresh Git project by running Git initialize. In this video, we're going to actually talk about two key things. The first thing we're going to talk about is workflow. And the second thing we're going to talk about is how to actually commit files, which strictly ties into the concept of a workflow. So before we go ahead, what is workflow? Before we actually write anything, let's talk about workflow in general. In the very first video, when I mentioned a general description of Git, i.e. it allows you to maintain the different versions of a given file and allows you to save files in locations as snapshots or states in time. When that magic happens, it just doesn't happen automatically. There's a few things you have to do and to do that you need to understand a few things also and one of the fundamental understandings of Git is workflows. So what is a workflow? A workflow is the process or a chain of processes that have to happen before a file can be saved into a state in a repository where the state of that file can be saved as some kind of snapshot. And I don't want to just kind of describe workflow in general first because it might not make a lot of sense. I, I think there might be some confusion from the first video, so we're just going to go straight into it. If you type in git status, this is currently telling us a couple of things from our project. It's telling us that we're on the master branch, it's telling us about an initial commit, and it's telling us there's nothing to commit. So what does this mean? When you type in git status, git status tells us the current status of your current project. In this case, we just happen to be on that branch and there's nothing to commit. So the first thing we're going to do is go into that folder and we're just going to create a really simple file. So in this case, I'm just going to say new uh, text file and I'm just going to call this test01 and that's it. So self type text file, there's nothing in it, but it doesn't matter. Now if I type in git status, so I'm just going to press the up arrow key. You can now see that this information is different to this information. What this is telling us is essentially that there is nothing to commit. Nothing to commit is another way of saying there are no changes in this project. However, now when we have a look, we can see that there is a change, in particular this file. This is what's called an untracked file. What is an untracked file? An untracked file is essentially a change to a file that sits local to your machine. You can, in essence, say that this file is a file that currently sits locally on your machine. So you can call this a local change. Now, why do I put the emphasis on local change? A local change is something that currently sits on your machine and what we want to do is actually push this change to your repository. Now, again, that doesn't really make much sense. It will make sense in a bit. What we want to do is to get this file into a state where it's actually saved. It's saved somewhere. Currently, Git is telling us that, hey, you have this file called test01.txt and I know about it, but I'm also telling you that it is currently an untracked file. So when I spoke about workflows, Git works in three stages. The first stage is local changes. So what we want to do is take this to the next stage. What we want to do is get this into stage two. So to do that, how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is add that file so that Git knows about. So, and to do that is quite simple. If I say git add and then the name of that file which is test01.txt 
And if I hit enter, this has now added that file to stage two. If I say git status, you can now see that it's changed to a different state altogether. It says changes to be committed. Now what is changes to be committed? So like I said, I call this the local state, i.e. changes local to your machine. This state is called the staged changes. So what is a staged change? Well, think about it this way. First I had this locally to my machine. Now this is sitting in a state where it's currently on my machine, but Git is kind of almost preparing to push this onto the final repository. What this means is Git is saying, hey, I know about this change. At one point it was locally to your machine, and now I know that you want me to save this, but he hasn't kind of sent, saved it yet. To think about it from a different perspective, if I use an arbitrary way of explaining it, think of this as a letter. This is a letter that you've written. It's still on your desktop. What you do next is you put the letter in an envelope. So this letter is now ready to be sent to someone. However, you haven't sent it yet. It is still in the envelope. The next thing we want to do is actually post the envelope, i.e. put it in some kind of mailbox or give it to a post office, whatever it is that you do with letters. That's the next thing we want to do. So this is stage one, local changes. This is stage two, staged changes. It's actually commit that change. So how do we do a commit? To do a commit, you say git commit. And when we commit, we actually want to write a message as part of that commit. To write a message, we do dash m. That means I want to write a message as part of this commit. And to write a message, you need to write the message inside quotation marks. So in this case, I'm going to say my first commit and hit enter. This is now saying some really important information. It's basically telling us that you have committed a change and this is the message of the commit. In particular, it's saying that one file has changed and this is the file in context. So now if I say git status, it's telling me that I am now on a branch where nothing is different. In other words, this information after we did the commit is telling us that your current local version is exactly the same as your repository version. In other words, this file has now been fully committed to the Git project repository. So let me explain that with a couple of more examples. If I now say create another file, and this time I'm going to call it test02. And if I now hit git status, this is now telling me that you have a new file local that Git knows about, but is still a local file. So what we're going to do is go ahead and add that as well. So I'm just going to say git add. And now if I say git status, this is telling me, hey, you know, you have this file and you've already, you know, parceled it and I'm ready to commit it. But we're not gonna commit just yet. We're gonna go back and we're going to create another test file. So, quick quiz. If I now hit git status, what do you think is gonna happen? What is git status going to show us? I'll give you a second to think about it. Now, if you've said that by doing this, clearly this has already been added but not committed and this has already and this has just been added git status should say something like the merger of these two git status i it should say something like this is ready for commit and this has just been identified as something you might want to add so let's go ahead and check and that's absolutely right what git is telling us now is you have a file which i can commit and you have another file which I can add. So what we want to do is basically add this file to our staging. So let's go ahead and do that first. So if I say git add 
And if I do get status again, this is now showing me that there are two files which Git is ready and is able to add to the Git project repository. So like I said, Git a Git project repository contains the final snapshots, the fully sent version of anything that you fully commit. So if I now say git commit dash m and this time I'm going to say second commit containing test 02 and test 03 and hit enter. It's now telling us that it's actually had two files and here are the names of the files and this is the message associated with each given file. Now I've done two commits so far, you know, that's great, that's actually good progress. But, you know, how can I see the changes? I, I need to be able to see, you know, my logs, right? I need to be able to see this somehow. Git provides us with the ability to see the history of commits. And to do that, all you do is type in git log. So this is now telling us that you've actually done two commits. This was your first commit and this was your second commit. So that's great. Git is now helping us keep track of the files that we've committed. So let's go through what we've done today really quickly because this can seem a bit confusing. One of the first things we talked about is making a change local to your machine, just to your machine in this instance. And when we did that, Git tells us this as an untracked file. We added that untracked file to our staging area. Our staging area is an area that isn't entirely on our machine and isn't entirely on the repository either. It's, it's somewhere in between. The last thing we did was we actually added that file in. So then the repository knew about it. And once we added the file in, when we did a git status, git told us that even though the file has now been fully pushed, there's no change between your local version and your repository version. In other words, it was telling us that there's, there are no files which are on track and there are no files which are ready to be committed. We then added a couple of other files to see variations in git status and finally we saw the git logs. So this, I hope this gives you a good understanding of what workflow is. Workflow for git is divided into three sections. The first is changes you make locally. The second is changes which you've made and which you've put into staging and you are about to commit it and the last is the changes will actually sit in your repository to use a really everyday example think of it like a letter a letter you write on your desktop by pencil sits local to your desk that is your local environment then you put it in an envelope and you put it in some kind of tray which sits neither on your desk or the destination is supposed to go to i.e a staging like environment and the final stage is where you actually send the letter out into either some kind of mailbox or some mailman or some post office, really doesn't matter. But the point is you sent it out and it's now out of your control, it's gone. That is the committed stage, i.e. that then leads to your repository. Anyway guys, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, ciao. Hi guys, it's Glassbox here and I really appreciate you guys watching my video. And if you've liked it, then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also, follow me on Twitter and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.